Hello everyone, today we will step through the GSA FD tutorial documentation referencing the IEEE Standard 80. You can find this tutorial documentation on the tutorial documents links in the GSA FD tutorial, as well as on the XGIS Lab help desk where you can download the CAD file that we will be walking through today. Here we have our GSA FD tutorial. First, we will start by setting the project information. And this will be simply putting in the information that we can use for our automated reporting, such as the project description and its name, customer information, designer, as well as the site's geo geographic location. This can be applied and then utilized for the automated reporting features of XGIS Lab. Next, we will specify the reference standards, which for this tutorial, we will specify IEEE standard 80 for the touch and set voltage criteria split factor, and conductor sizing. Next, we will specify the frequency of our analysis, which will be 60 Hertz. And this allows us to select the multi-layer soil model icon. This allows us to manually enter a soil model, but following the tutorial documentation and typical workflow, we are going to navigate to the soil resistivity analysis by hitting the calculate icon. Here, we may copy information from an Excel, which is provided from the tutorial documentation, and simply paste that into our soil resistivity analysis table. Here we have a preview of the soil resistivity measurements, and this could be automatically determined of, appropriate, of an appropriate soil model based off of this checkbox. But following the tutorial documentation, we will, follow, we will specify a two-layer model, turn off weights, and hit calculate and apply this soil model. Here we in, in the results group box, we can see that we have our soil model displayed and hitting the snap icon, this model or this image may be saved for our automated reporting. The next portion of our analysis and tutorial documentation is to import our system. And we are going to import this GSA FD tutorial for the IEEE and EN standard. We just need to navigate to the file location and set our scale, in this case in millimeters, before we add in the layers. So here we will add in the IO1 layer, specify this as electrode one, and specify the conductor size, as well as move these conductors one meter into the earth to reflect the location of them in the real world. Next, we will import the rod one layer. This will also be assigned as electrode one because it's in contact with our IO one layer. The conductors will be a solid conductor that is 20 millimeters and also shifted one meter into the earth. Note that these rods are actually drafted in the software in the CAD file itself, as you can see illustrated in this drawing. So we don't need to use the block reference or cell name in order to import those ground rods. And finally, we will import our last analysis layer, which will be the IO2 layer, which is an, an independent electrode. So it will be assigned as electrode two. This will also be a 70 millimeter square conductor and shifted one meter into the earth. And just for reference, we will import the civil works information as a background layer. This will be a visual representation of our system and location where equipment may be located, but does not affect our actual analysis. With this, importing into our XGS Lab software, we can see the representation of our grounding system. And zooming in, we can see our ground rods are also imported. The next stage of our analysis, following the tutorial documentation, is to insert a fault. So we will use this input injected current icon and select the appropriate conductor and specify the conductor's name or reference and specify the fault current, which we will follow the tutorial documentations and assign 26,930 amps. We also want to set some reference points. And this allows us to quickly pull information about specific locations in our grounding system. Here we will refer to this reference point as the steel factory. And we will assign another reference point 
at our entrance, which is our Electro 2 and an independent system. With this, we can hit the debug and compute. The debug and compute evaluates our model as we've imported to verify that there are no conductors overlapping and making sure that our electrodes are actually independent and not incidentally connected. This analysis, once completed, will provide us our grid impedance and the voltages as it propagates through our system. Here we see that we have a new analysis and summary tab and going to the GPR on earthing, we can see that the impedance from the substation point of view where we've injected our fault is 0.08 ohms following the tutorial documentation. The next stage is we will evaluate how much of the current will go into the earth versus the portion that may go through transmission line shield wires or distribution neutrals. Following the IEEE standard 80s references for NXC, we will enter in our resistance of our grounding system, the total fault current as we've anal analyzed, the frequency of our analysis and the clearing time of our fault, as well as the X over R, which was provided at the tutorial documentations of 30. We also have the equivalent impedance of our uh, transmission and distribution network that is calculated as 0.455 and 0.241 ohms. And this gives us 25,441 amps as our injected current, which we can enter by going back to the XGL view and selecting our conductor where we energized our system and modifying the victim dropdown to specify the fault current as that 25Ka. Applying this, we will lose our analysis results, but we will reevaluate our system shortly. Next, we want to evaluate our conductor sizing. In here, we will enter in the total fault current that we had for our single line of ground fault with its clearing time. We were also provided a double line of ground fault, which is 21,930 amps with a clearing time of 0.5 seconds. And this K factor indicates the grid splits, indicating one correlating to a single path for current to flow, which would correlate to our ground leads or equipment bonds. Specifying a 0.6 value reduces the size of the required conductor because we are indicating that we have multiple paths for current to go once our current is distributing in our ground grid. We are also going to calculate the permissible limits based off of the IEEE standard 80 criteria. Here we will use that 0.5 second clearing time and this will calculate the permissible touch and step voltage limits, which are 177 volts and 218 volts. Now that we've had all of our information calculated and we've energized it with a lower fault current, that 25 Ka, we will again debug and compute our analysis. Note the time that takes to analyze is going to depend on your personal computer or server that you are running this analysis on. If you have more threads, your computation will be faster. Now we can see our energization is re-evaluated in this analysis tab. So here we can see we have a 2,100 volt ground potential rise. And we can see this also illustrated when we navigate to our distributions group box and plot the voltage potential of our system. Here we can see where we have energized our, our system that approximately 2,000 volts, but far away from our energization, the fault currents or the voltage potential in our ground grid is dramatically reduced by almost a thousand volts. And this is the power of GSA FD is that you can an analyze large systems that are approximately 500 meters across and consider that voltage drop. Next, we are going to go to the area calculation and this is going to allow us to determine the touch and step voltage performance or how well we align with the IEEE standard 80 touch and step voltage criteria. Following the standard documentation, we will set the area calculation origins 
and length. So in the length, we'll specify a 480 meter length and a width of 400 meters. And we will reduce the resolution with a 3.5 meter step. Hitting calculate. Each of these red dots will indicate where on our system we are directly calculating the Earth's surface potentials. And this allows us to then, therefore, calculate the touch and step voltages. As our analysis is completed, we can look at our native Earth potentials. Here we can see approximately 1,700 volts on the Earth's surface potential. If we rotate our view, we can see the magnitude is dramatically higher at the substation where we have energized our system and drops off as we go away from our fault point. Going to the touch and step voltages, we are going to plot a safety plot. And note, we are specifying the reference as our substation point and going to plot our safe areas. Noting that all the areas have shown as yellow, this indicates that we are not meeting the IEEE standard 80 touch and step voltage criteria. However, if we change our reference point to another location, such as the steel factory, we will see different results. And this is because when we use the substation, that is the point of reference for our hands in contact with our equipment. If we use the steel factory reference point, now we will see that a lower potential based off of the voltage of our grid here is used as the reference point for our touch voltages. Another way to evaluate this more accurately is by using the all elements evaluation. And we can specify a reach distance of 30 meters and replot our safe areas. Now that the results have completed, we can see a very different graphic is provided based off of the all elements safe areas plot. Next, we will look at the magnetic fields, but first we will save this image with a capture image so that the image can be incorporated into our automated reporting. And we will go to the area calculation. And with GSA FD, you have the capability not only to evaluate touch and step voltages, but also to calculate the magnetic fields above the Earth's surface or below. Here we are going to specify an area calculation around our substation, and we're going to pay particular attention to the current and thus the magnetic fields going from our substation to our steel factory grid. Now that the analysis is completed, we can look at our results by going to our group box and plotting the 3D view. And here we can zoom in and see a very drastic difference in the magnetic fields based off the conductor location, as well as the limited leads coming from the substation to the steel factory can, can facilitate greater current and thus greater magnetic fields above those points. We will take a capture of this image. And then in our summary, we can look at our gallery. This will indicate the images that we have snapped as stepping through this tutorial. And going to the automated report provides a convenient way for us to express the information that we've captured in this analysis, which you can go through and see that our soil resistivity measurements and results are incorporated into the report as well as any images that we've captured. This can be exported into different formats and incorporated into your documentation.